So the adventure has come to an end and you are enjoying some downtime. Clutching your recently filled money bags, you make your way to the marketplace to buy some nice things. However, merchants see you coming and they have their eye on your silver. Silently, they think to themselves, this is going to be easy. In this video, I will be looking at the bartering and haggling system within the Mithras rule set. My name's Inwills, and welcome to the In Crowd. Hello and welcome back everyone. Okay then, please roll your perceptions now. Did you make it? Well, if you did make it, then you notice that the person doing these rules video has now got a beard and moustache. Did you notice? So you have stumbled across another short rule video based on the Mithras rule set. So within these shorter videos, I take an element, a concept, a certain rule within Mithras, and I quickly tell you about how to play it, what to roll, and what's behind the rule. So characters and players always wish to buy something. And sometimes this can be a very uh, a role playing situation or just yes, buy them with the buy them with silver just on the price of the coal, coal rule book. Alternatively, Mithras presents with you some bartering and haggling rules. And it's these rules that we're going to have a look at today and they will allow your characters to buy a multitude of things either at a much cheaper price or if the merchant wins a much more expensive price what can you buy well anything from armor wagons oxen all candles um, like Bartleby does in the mithras campaign we run okay so let's get into it shall we let's do bartering first so bartering is when there is an exchange of goods rather than goods being paid for by with coinage. You could have a whole campaign based around bartering when there was no coinage at all. But generally bartering occurs in more primitive or nomadic cultures. Now, it is really important for the character or the player to gain some kind of worth or understanding of what they are bartering with and what they're bart bartering for. And of course, be just because we're bartering and rolling dice does not mean that we, would, we should pass by the wonderful opportunity for some role playing. But as you are aware, if you've watched my Gibbering GM videos, make sure that the bartering or the role play reflects the skills and the characteristics of the character involved. Okay, so there's a series of steps and dice roll um, within the bartering system. And the table that I'm referring to throughout this rules video is on page 56 of the Cole rule book. Okay then, so when bartering starts, the the first thing the player or the character needs to do is to make a culture or customs role, whichever you think is more appropriate. Now, this role is used to see whether or not the character has an advantage in the bartering opposed role, which will come next. So the success on this initial customs or culture role dictates the difficulty rating or the difficulty grade of the commerce role which is going to come next. Let me give you for an example, but remember the full table is on page 56. For example, let's say that I roll a culture role for my character and it's just a standard success. Now this means that in the next stage of the process, my commerce role will be easy. If I'd roll a critical success or with my customs or culture role, then the next role will be very easy. However, 
if I was to fumble, then that would change the difficulty to hard. So once the level of difficulty has been determined, then it's time for an opposed role. For this, the player can use either their influence or their commerce skill, with the difficulty de determined by the previous custom or culture role that we've talked about. This role will be opposed by the merchants or whoever they're bartering with. They will roll their willpower or commerce roles, whichever they would like to choose. If the player succeeds, the offer is accepted. Full stop, done and done, dusted. But if the opposed role fails, then the exchange of goods is not accepted. A fumble generally means that the bartering was not successful at all and the trader has been, say, offended. Time for those players to make a hasty retreat. And before we move on to haggling, please consider liking, commenting and subscribing to the channel. I produce regular rules videos for, about Mithras, but also actual play sessions using both the Mithras rules and the new M space rules. Yeah, make sure you keep an eye open for that. I do personal blogs and blogs or videos about GMing in my series, The Gibbering GM. So why not subscribe and press that bell button so you'll get a notification when I upload a new video. Also, if you would like to provide some extra support, then the, the link to both my Ko-fi account and my Patreon account are down below. Anything that you can donate or share is gratefully received but please remember just liking or commenting or subscribing to these this channel also helps considerably and if you're interested in either our Mithras campaign or our M Space campaign then there are some special tiers within Patreon that you can buy to get behind the scenes information um, about the campaign and even my past adventure notes. Yes, and whatever you do, I really do appreciate it. I really do. It's helping me get one step closer to fulfilling my dream of being a content creator. Okay, enough about my own self-promotion. Let's get back to haggling. So haggling is slightly different from bartering. Haggling is when a, the person or the character wishes to reduce the price of something when they're buying it. Now, just like bartering, we start off with almost like an advantage roll. And to start the trade, the character or the player needs to roll to see whether or not they have the advantage in the transaction. When haggling though, the participants roll their insight role or insight skill rather than their custom or culture role for bartering. Now, the same table which was used in bartering is used here again, but you can see that they will have their difficulty changed. Now, once the difficulty grade has been determined, then the main trade role can happen. This is a differential role, so a bit like um, combat between the commerce skill or influence skill of the player against the willpower or commerce skill of the trader. Now, remember, because it's a differential role, we're looking for the difference in successes. And this determines the percentage alteration or change of the item. Let me give you an example. If the player rolled a success and the merchant failed their roll, then that would be one level of success. Of course, if the player got a critical and the merchant got a failed again, then that would be two successes. Now, there's a table on page 57 in the core rule books, which shows that what these, um, the percentage change in the price will happen due to those different successes. So if we continue one of the examples up above, let's say that the player has gained one advantage. They got a standard success. Well, the merchant failed. So they have one level of success. Now, if the player 
got that, then this would be an advantage. And so they would have advantage in the haggling. For this, once you look at the table, you will see that the price of the item, the player will get it for only 75% of the cost rather than 100%. Now, let's swap those um, skills round or the successes round and let's say that the merchant got one level of success and the player failed now in this case the player has got zero level successes but the merchant has the advantage with one level of success and because of this according to the table on page 57 the player will have to buy the item for 125% of the original cost. So you can see there's quite a difference there. It would probably be really good to invest in a merchant type character that can do all these transactions. If the roles are equal, so no success difference between the merchant and the player, then the item is bought at the standard cost of that item which is either from the call rule book or from within your own campaign. So let me summarize what I've said there because it can be quite difficult to get and understand first time through. So in both bartering and haggling the participants roll to see if they will have an advantage in the trade. With bartering, it is the custom and culture role, and with haggling, it's their insight role. The outcome of this role uh, allows a participant to change the difficulty of their trade role or the next role. Bartering is then opposed between influence or commerce versus willpower or commerce, while haggling is opposed between um, influence or commerce against willpower and commerce. Now, although it can be a little bit difficult at time, you soon get the hang of it. And I would always recommend that you have the tables somewhere close by. And that's it for haggling and bartering. I really do like the idea that the, the rules actually allow somebody who may not excel in combat can really get into that trading and that interaction in the downtime. Or maybe even offering to exchange items with their bartering with a strange primitive group of people that they have met. Remember, if you have any rules that you would like me to go over, then please do pop them in the comments below. And don't forget to check out all my previous Mithras rules video. They're all in a, um, a playlist for you to enjoy. OK, so until next time, I hope all your opposed roles succeed and reward you with a well-deserved special. Until then, happy Mithrasing, everyone. See ya. Bye.